Good morning, folks. This is Shepard CW coming to you again. But today we're just going to be, I'll be speaking to you as Corky, Corky Fincher. Many of you know when you hear that name who I am. Some don't. Uh, in the working world around Winter Haven, um, Charles is what you know me by. Currently, it is a light rain outside my house in Winter Haven, Florida. A dreary day. Not, not a, a day I'm glad I don't have to be outside like the construction crew that's putting in fiber optic cable on the other side of my house for some other folks. What coming to you today, kind of like a fireside chat. Unfortunately, I'm not going to build a fire in my garage and you know, pretend that there's a fire going or anything. We'll, I'll just use some videos of that for you so you can kind of cu curl up with, uh, with your favorite beverage, coffee, tea, cut chocolate, whatever, whatever you like on a, on a cold f f autumn, fall day, wherever you're uh, here in this app. A lot of my ideas come to me oftentimes in the middle of the night, which unfortunately for me, who's getting still getting used to uh, sleeping overnight as opposed to working overnight, which I had done for so many years. Um, a year plus, over a year now, I still haven't quite got the hang of s sleeping in bed with my wife um, because I'm used to being gone from her <laughs> at night time. Um, but a lot of, anyway, anyway, I've kind of gotten sidetracked, but a lot of my ideas come to me in the middle of the night. And after this last video, it, it kind of dawned on me, I got to, to thinking things over. I've done a lot of videos um, on salvation and your need to that. But what's missing, what I, what I've been impressed the source of my videos, I will just say it's Jesus, because the Holy Spirit, because I... Then I'm totally lost. <laughs> so this, here we go. This is, see, this is, hard, this is not easy to do these things. Um, some of you just kind of laugh at me, like, uh, you got ideas in your head, you know, A, A to Z is all planned out until you go to hook up to technology and... Open your mouth and what comes out? Bubbles. Bubbles of ink that break of thought. But anyway, I think I got it back together now. Uh, what, I, what I want to impress on you is, yes, you have the need to be saved. That, that's very important. But so many of us, so many of you especially that are, that are listening, already are saved. You know, great, you know, I'm saved going to heaven, you know, the old expression of, you got your fire insurance, it's all paid up by the, by the blood of Jesus. He paid your fire insurance and you're not going to hell. But something that that has I've been getting strong impressions are on are way back in in the seventies when I was just a teenager, mid seventies, um, I snuck out to the local Air Force base uh in, in Cheyenne, uh with a a good Christian brother. Um and at at a, one of the Bible studies they had at at, at the Air Force Base they went over a book called My Heart, Christ's Home by the late uh, brother Robert Boyd Munger. And many of you over the years have read that. Um, there was required reading when I started Bible college um, last, last, last time in, in the early 2000s. Uh, and, and I'm going to be sharing at the end of this, I'll share uh, some videos of somebody who has done a a really good job at presenting the book as opposed to me sitting here uh, in my in, in my shop trying to read this and, and not butcher the, the author's book. But it, what's really been going on in my brain and heart and, and one of the reasons I really want to take time to, to do this is with a world situation like it is, you know, we are what, days, hours, you know, months away from an all-out uh, war with, with, with Russia, it appears. Uh, the world system, the United States recently, um, is going to just take, take steps to do away with um, cash, things like that, be a digital currency. Um, the new world religion of Chrislam is had a church service just recently over in, in Egypt. Um, it's, it's going full-time, and, and our society is just really... Uh, going crazy, 
um, the elections may did not turn out the way many of us thought that uh, they they would, given the fact that we're t a lot of people are tired of the current uh, political situation, and we had a chance to correct it. But um, but God God knew, knew that going into this, and um, has things set up the way He wants it, so that He can usher in. His, his plans for the future that we read in the book of Revelation, which is kind of cool. But that leaves us still kind of wondering, okay, all this bad stuff is happening, Jesus is coming back, great, wonderful, woo -hoo. throw a party, you know, put your little party hats on, your little, little, little blowout whistle, kind of papery things. Yeah, it's time for all that stuff. But, w with all that silliness being said, okay, and Am I ready? Is Corky Fincher ready? Is is you, is you are are you, the viewer, ready to meet Jesus when he comes back in the clouds? Now today I've got a pretty good cloud bank overhead because it is still raining, foggy, icky day. I hope it's not that way where you're at. But the point being, in the eastern sky, when he blows that trumpet, and we are instantly transported, teleported, uh, using sci-fi language. Uh, from one breath to the next breath, from our, capo our, our fleshly breath to our heavenly br breath with him with a new body, new gloriously wonderful body. F I get my full hair, all my hair back, and my belly is going to be gone. I, I hope that he's not going to let me go to heaven with my big giant belly. <laughs> so, uh, we've gone in that situation before, but but I, am I ready to, to meet the sovereign, the, the very one who died for me, who, who suffered? And I've studied this at length as a medical person, what he had to go through to, to pay my price to be with him forever, to, to be his forever. I've studied that and I know it's beyond all, all imagination. But uh, am I ready to meet him? What, uh, there's been movies done, you know, and like in the songs, imagine, you know, I can only imagine. You know, am I gonna fall down? Am I gonna stand up? Am I gonna dance around? Am I gonna do the, you know, the, the boogie woogie? Am I gonna do the hokey pokey? When I meet Jesus, I don't think so, folks. I think that we are gonna be in totally in awe to be in His presence. Uh, I don't know about you, I'm kind of in in a lot of ways terrified to, to at at that concept of of to to be with Him like this. It's just, but one one thing. Even though I'm, I'm, I'm like totally unsure as to, to, to that situation of you know poof, you know sinful body, glorified body, because of Jesus. But at the same time, though, you know, I, one one thing, Preacher Simpson, the late Dale Simpson from Rifle Range Church, I just call him Preacher Simpson. He's a sweetheart, and I had a chance to meet him. Several times after, after, um, uh, after, after I left the church and stuff, and we'd talk and stuff. But one thing that he always impressed upon us was, and and uh, and likewise, brother um, Sketch Erickson, many of you know, and and uh, I, I got to know Sketch pretty well after uh, I left left the ministry of uh, of the Agape Players, and he because he lived close by. And one thing he wanted to know oftentimes was, are you living holy? for the Lord. Like, and, and I kind of dodged the question because usually at the time he'd ask me, I wasn't living holy for God. I was going, you know, I, I drinking, cussing, wasn't running around with women. You know, I had no sense not to do that. But I was not living holy for God like our, our Lord wants us to do. But given, given that stage set, one thing, some verses uh, have been, been impressed upon me to, to share with you today. It's Philippians um, 1, 6 from the King James. Being confident of this very thing, that he, being Jesus, which hath, hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, which that being when he returns for us. Then his work in us will com be complete. But the one thing uh, Preacher Simpson always lived by, and it's strongly been impressed in my mind over the years, was... When we stand before our Lord and Savior, a as an individual, yes, we'll be surrounded by all these people. I don't know if it's going to be a line or it's like, next, you know, number so-and-so, you know, 
and, and they call, and they call our name. And we we go th- we work our way through the cra- back of the crowd, uh, um, back back of the bride that we are uh, of Christ, and we stand. We're we're there. We're kneeling or standing or which whichever we do. Uh, again, that's still unknown. Still terrifies me. But what Preacher Simpson always impressed upon me, and this comes from First Corinthians three. Uh, 12 through uh, 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, for every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day sh- shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's works of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I like that because Preacher Simpson lived before my eyes. Whatever he did, he wanted to make sure it wasn't wood, hay, or stubble that at the moment of refining when he was brought before the Lord, his his works when he, when he looked over his life his his works would not be burned up but they would last um, the times he spent preaching and teaching and counseling and and be, and befriending those who needed it those things lasted will last when he when he stand when it's his turn to stand before the Lord these will last and and these jewels I believe will go into our crowns that we ultimately will give back to Jesus. I know I've said a lot, a lot of it's been kind of confusing at times, but the thing is, we want to live our lives such in such a way, such a manner, that we do stand before our Lord. Let's see, I ran over to Cat, and just to make sure he was dead, I backed over it three times. That's going to be, that action in our life is going to be dead, uh, is going to be burned up. Um, our, our vanity, our, our pride will be burned up. The... The things that don't don't matter, fluff as I call it, don't matter. But the events I believe, and this is only my my beliefs, the things, the time he helped the little lady reach up on the top shelf or to to get something at the grocery store, that I think w- will stay. That will be maybe silver, is it, or or the day you helped feed this person or this 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 group that needed help, things like that. There are, th- there are times in our life when um, when we will do great things that, that God will count. He has his own little standard mark, and we won't know what it is until it's, till we stand before him. But the thing is, are we living our lives in such a way that when we do stand before him it, at, at any day, any hour, at any moment, uh, because t- the time is right for his return. There, there's nothing that needs to be done prophetic on the prophetic timetable before he comes back for us are we ready to unashamed unashamedly stand in his presence yes lord i've been doing what you want i've been reading praying those two things uh, and that's i don't do do very well at all uh, i'm really bad at it when it comes to to reading and, and, and praying um others others of you are, are much better than i am um, but but live your lives in such a way that when he does appear, totally unannounced, he's warned us, hey, I'm coming back for you. But be ready. I I don't know how to tell you really any other way. You know, let let these things sink in. Are are we again living our lives so that we're not going to be ashamed when he shows up for us? I know I've got times that I you know places I go to that. Maybe I shouldn't be going there because when he does come, he's not going to want me to be there to start with. Confusing words, I know, might might have been, I might have just said, but that's what's been in my heart. I don't want you, when it's, when it's your turn, whether you have to go through the grave uh, before he shows up and then resurrect, be resurrected out of the grave, or whether you get or one of the chosen ones who will be alive um, when 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 he comes, and we just instantly translated from this life into the next, in in just the space of a blink of an eye, we'll be gone. 
nothing's left but our clothes and man-made medical devices. <laughs> because we won't need those with our new body thing. And that's, that's all glory to our to our God and, and our Jesus. So what I'm going to do next is let you watch for yourself um, the the, gr or the group that uh, made these last two films based upon um, My Heart, Christ Home by uh, brother, the late brother um, Boyd Robert Boyd Munger. And I'll leave this with you. Thank you for, for being with me. Thanks for enduring this sometimes, I think. Uh, after my last video, I was not happy, but the message was good. It was it was it was the right message. I just unfortunately um, the wind was blowing, uh, which I couldn't couldn't we could barely artists and I could barely feel it. Uh, we were hot and we were tired from from walking all those miles uh, at, at that new park. Uh, it's good to have the have our have that sister close by. So thank you for being with me. Um, all I can say is keep watching the skies. But the skies. Yeah, here I am sounding like Mandisha. <laughs> But um, keep watching Eastern Sky. Lord is coming back any, at any moment. I can't impress that upon you enough. Um, thank you for being with me. Thank you for calling me friend, brother. For my moms I've got out there, Betty and Patty. Thanks, thanks for being my moms. Brother, Dad, Ruman, thank you. And again, love you all. Wish I was closer to, to give you hugs and to interact with you more, but... Thanks again. Corky, signing out. My Heart, Christ's Home by Robert Boyd Munger, a Presbyterian minister who wrote this timeless work in 1951. Paul wrote to the Ephesians these words, that God would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may settle down and be at home in your hearts by faith. One evening I invited Jesus Christ into my heart. He came into the darkness of my heart and turned on the light. He built a fire in the cold hearth and banished the chill. He started music where there had been stillness and he filled the emptiness with his own loving, wonderful fellowship. After Christ entered my heart, I said to him, Lord, I want this heart of mine to be yours. I want to have you settle down here and be perfectly at home. Everything I have belongs to you. Let me show you around and introduce you to the various features of the home that you may be more comfortable and that we may have fuller fellowship together. The first room was the study, the library. Let us call it the study of the mind. Now in my home, this room of the mind is a very small room with very thick walls. But it is an important room, as it is the control room of the house. He entered with me and looked around at the books in the bookcase, the magazines upon the table, the pictures on the walls. As I followed his gaze, I became uncomfortable. Strangely enough, I had not felt badly about this before, but now that he was there looking at these things, I was embarrassed. There were some books there that his eyes were too pure to behold. There was a lot of trash and literature on the table that a Christian had no business reading. And as for the pictures on the walls, the imaginations and thoughts of the mind, these were shameful. I turned to him and said, Master, I know that this room needs a radical alteration. Will you help me make it what it ought to be to bring every thought into captivity to you? Surely, he said, Gladly will I help you. First of all, take all the things that you are reading and looking at which are not helpful, pure, good, and true, and throw them out. Now put on the empty shelves the books of the Bible. Fill the library with scriptures and meditate on them day and night. As for the pictures on the walls, you will have difficulty controlling these images. But here is an aid. He gave me a large portrait of himself. Hang this centrally, he said, on the wall of the mind. I did, and I have discovered through the years that when my thoughts are centered upon Christ himself, his purity and power cause impure thoughts to back away. So he has helped me to bring my thoughts into captivity. 
May I suggest to you, if you have difficulty with this little room of the mind, that you bring Christ in there. Pack it full with the Word of God. Meditate upon it and keep before it the immediate presence of the Lord Jesus. From the study, we went into the dining room, the room of appetites and desires. Now, this was a very large room. I spent a good deal of time in the dining room and much effort in satisfying my wants. I said to him, this is a favorite room. I am quite sure you'll be pleased with what we serve. He seated himself at the table with me and asked, what's on the menu for dinner? Well, I said, my favorite dishes, money, academic degrees and stocks with newspaper articles of fame and fortune as side dishes. These were the things I liked, worldly fair. I suppose there was nothing radically wrong in any particular item, but it was not the food that should satisfy the life of a real Christian. When the food was placed before him, he said nothing about it. However, I observed that he did not eat it, and I said to him, somewhat disturbed, Master, don't you care for this food? What is the trouble? He answered, I have meat to eat that you do not know of. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. He looked at me again and said, If you want food that really satisfies you, seek the will of the Father, not your own pleasures, not your own desires, and not your own satisfaction. Seek to please me, and that food will satisfy you. And there at the table he gave me a taste of doing God's will. What a flavor! There is no food like it in all the world. It alone satisfies. Everything else is dissatisfying in the end. Now, if Christ is in your heart, what kind of food are you serving him? And what kind of food are you eating yourself? Are you living for the lust of the flesh and the pride of life selfishly? Or are you choosing God's will for your meat and drink? We walk next into the living room. This room was rather intimate and comfortable. I liked it. It had a fireplace, overstuffed chairs, a sofa, and a quiet atmosphere. He also seemed pleased with it. He said, this is indeed a delightful room. Let us come here often. Well, naturally, as a young Christian, I was thrilled. I couldn't think of anything I would rather do than have a few minutes with Christ in intimate companionship. But little by little, under the pressure of many responsibilities, this time began to be shortened. Why, I don't know, but I thought I was just too busy to spend time with Christ. This was not intentional, you understand. It just happened that way. Finally, not only was the time shortened, but I began to miss a day now and then. It was examination time at the university, then it was some other urgent emergency. I would miss it two days in a row and often more. I remember one morning when I was in a hurry, rushing downstairs, eager to be on my way. As I passed by the living room, the door was open. Looking in, I saw a fire in the fireplace and Jesus was sitting there. Suddenly, in dismay, I thought to myself, He was my guest. I invited him into my heart. He has come as Lord of my home, and yet here I am neglecting him. I turned and went in. With downcast glance, I said, Blessed Master, forgive me. Have you been here all these mornings? Yes, he said. I told you I would be here every morning to meet with you. Then I was even more ashamed. He had been faithful in spite of my unfaithfulness. I asked his forgiveness and he readily forgave me as he does when we are truly repentant. The trouble with you is this. You have been thinking of the quiet time of the Bible study and prayer time as a factor in your own spiritual progress. But you have forgotten that this hour means something to me also. Remember, I love you. I have redeemed you at great cost. I value your fellowship. Now, he said, do not neglect this hour, if only for my sake. Whatever else may be your desire, remember, I want your fellowship. You know, the truth is that Christ desires my companionship. He loves me, wants me to be with him, wants to be with me and waits for me, has done more to transform my quiet time with God than any other single fact. Don't let Christ wait alone in the living room of your heart. 
But every day, find some time when, with your Bible and in prayer, you may be together with Him. Before long, he asked, Do you have a work room in your home? Down in the basement of the home of my heart, I had a workbench and some equipment, but I was not doing much with it. Once in a while, I would play around with a few little gadgets, but I wasn't producing anything substantial or worthwhile. I led him down there. He looked over the workbench and what little talents and skills I had. He said, This is quite well furnished. What are you producing with your life for the kingdom of God? He looked at one or two little toys that I had thrown together on the bench and held one up to me. Are these little toys all that you're doing for others in your Christian life? Well, I said, Lord, that is the best I can do. I know it isn't much, and I really want to do more, but after all, I have no skill or strength to do more. Would you like to do better, he asked. Certainly, I replied. All right. Let me have your hand. Now relax in me and let my spirit work through you. I know that you are unskilled, clumsy, and awkward, but the Holy Spirit is the master worker, and if he controls your hands and your heart, he will work through you. And so stepping around behind me and putting his great strong hands over mine, controlling the tools with his skilled fingers, he began to work through me. Do not become discouraged because you cannot do much for God. Your ability is not the fundamental condition. It is He who is controlling your fingers and upon whom you are relying. Give your talents and gifts to God, and He will do things with them that will surprise you. I remember the time He asked me about the playroom. I was hoping He would not ask about that. There were certain friendships, activities, and amusements that I wanted to keep for myself. I did not think Christ would enjoy them or, or approve of them, so I evaded the question. But there came an evening when I was on my way out with some of my friends, and as I was about to cross the threshold, he stopped me with a glance and asked, Are you going out? I replied, Yes. Good, he said. I would like to go with you. Oh, I answered rather awkwardly. I don't think, Lord Jesus, that you would really want to go with us. Let's go out tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we'll go to prayer meeting, but tonight I have another appointment. He said, that's all right. Only I thought that when I came into your home, we were going to do everything together, to be close companions. I just want you to know that I'm willing to go with you. Well, I said, we will go someplace together tomorrow night. That evening I spent some miserable hours. I felt wretched. What kind of a friend was I to Jesus when I was deliberately leaving him out of my associations, doing things and going places that I knew very well he would not enjoy? When I returned that evening, there was a light in his room, and I went up to talk it over with him. I said, Lord, I've learned my lesson. I can't have a good time without you. From now on, we will do everything together. Then we went down into the playroom of the house, and he transformed it. He brought into life real joy, real happiness, real satisfaction, new friends, new excitement, new joys. Laughter and music have been ringing through the house ever since. There is just one more matter that I might share with you. One day I found him waiting for me at the door, and a resting look was in his eye. As I entered, he said to me, there is a peculiar odor in the house. There's something dead around here. It's upstairs. I think it's in the hall closet. As soon as he said this, I knew what he was talking about. Yes, there was a small closet up there on the landing, just a few feet square. And in that closet behind lock and key, I had one or two little personal things that I did not want anyone to know about. And certainly I did not want Christ to see them. I knew they were dead and rotting things left over from the old life, and yet I loved them, and I wanted them so for myself that I was afraid to admit they were there. Reluctantly, I went up with him, and as we mounted the stairs, the odor became stronger and stronger. He pointed at the door, it's in there, some dead thing. I was angry. That's the only way I can put it. I had given him access to the library. 
the dining room, the living room, the workroom, the playroom. And now he was asking me about a little two by four closet. I said to myself, this is too much. I am not going to give him the key. Well, he said, reading my thoughts, if you think I'm going to stay up here on the second floor with this odor, you are mistaken. I will take my bed out on the back porch. I'm certainly not going to put up with that. Then I saw him start down the stairs. When you have come to know and love Christ, the worst thing that can happen is to sense his fellowship retreating from you. I had to surrender. I'll give you the key, I said sadly, but you'll have to open the closet and clean it out. I haven't the strength to do it. I know, he said. I know you haven't. Just give me the key. Just authorize me to take care of that closet and I will. So with trembling fingers, I passed the key to him. He took it from my hand, walked over to the door, opened it, entered it, took out all the putrefying stuff that was rotting there and threw it away. Then he cleaned the closet and painted it, fixed it up, doing it all in a moment's time. Oh, what victory and release. Then a thought came to me. I said to myself, I've been trying to keep this heart of mine clean for Christ. I start on one room and no sooner have I cleaned that than another room is dirty. I begin on the second room and the first room becomes dust again. I am so tired and weary trying to maintain a clean heart and obedient life. I am just not up to it. So I ventured a question. Lord, is there any chance that you would take over the responsibility of the whole house and operate it for me and with me just as you did that closet? Would you take the responsibility to keep my heart what it ought to be and my life where it ought to be? I could see his face light up as he replied, Certainly, that is what I came to do. You cannot be a victorious Christian in your own strength. That is impossible. Let me do it through you and for you. That is the way. But, he added slowly, I am not owner of this house. I am just a guest. I have no authority to proceed since the property is not mine. I saw it in a minute and dropping to my knees, I said, Lord, you have been a guest and I have been the host. From now on, I'm going to be the servant. You are going to be the owner and master and Lord. Running as fast as I could to the strong box, I took out the title deed to the house describing its assets and liabilities, location and situation and condition. I eagerly signed it over to belong to him alone for time and eternity. Here, I said, here it is, all that I am and have forever. Now you run the house. I'll just remain with you as a servant and friend. He took my life that day and I can give you my word. There is no better way to live the Christian life. He knows how to keep it in shape and deep peace settles down on the soul. May Christ settle down and be at home in your heart as Lord of all.